Hi. Now, in this next part of the question, we're asked to hence solve for x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 180 degrees this equation, tan 2x equals 5 sine 2x. It says hence solve because in the first part we had to show that this equation could be written as all of 1 minus 5 cos 2x times sine 2x which equals 0. So if you'd like to give this a go, just pause the video, come back when ready, and you can then check your working against mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So we're going to use this version of the equation. And because we've got a product of two factors that equal zero, we've got one factor is 1 minus 5 cos 2x, and the other factor is sine 2x. And because we've got this product of factors that equal 0, we can say that either one or both of these factors must equal 0. So that's our starting point here. We can say that 1 minus 5 cosine of 2x equals 0, or sine of 2x equals 0. All right. Now, Let's deal with this first one, okay? We can say then that when 1 minus 5 cos 2x equals 0, we just need to rearrange this for cosine 2x. So if we add 5 cosine 2x to both sides, that's going to give us 1 equals 5 cosine 2x. Or I could turn it around and say therefore 5 cosine of 2x equals 1. And now I need to just divide by 5, so we end up with cosine of 2x equals 1 fifth. And at this point, to get 2x, I've got to inverse cosine both sides. So 2x is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 fifth. Now we're working in degrees mode, so you've got to make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, okay? Just in case it inadvertently had been in radians mode from another question. So, assuming that you've done that, check it out on your calculator, you'll find that you get 2x equals, and you'll get 78.463, and so on, degrees. Now what you don't want to do, okay, is immediately divide by 2. What we need to do is get a list of answers. This is a very common mistake, just to divide by 2 and then work with what x is to get the other answers. Don't do that, just stick with the 2x. Now you could either use a graphical method or the quadrant rule. It's up to you. I'm going to use the quadrant rule for this part because I feel it's a lot quicker. If you're unfamiliar with the quadrant rule, you can always check this out on my website. Okay, there's tutorials there for the quadrant rule. So we start with zero degrees here. And what we do is we mark in the quadrants where cosine is going to be a positive value. We've got cosine of 2x here equals 1 fifth, a positive value. And that will be in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. We draw two lines equally inclined to this horizontal and mark those two angles in as exactly the same. And we've already seen that the acute angle is 78 0.463 degrees. I'm just going to write 78 in here though, okay, because I haven't got much room. So that angle in here, that little blue one there, is 78 odd degrees. So we'll just put a marker out there. 78, I can put I can put the whole lot in, I suppose. 78.463 odd degrees. Now that means that this one, starting from zero, this is a possible 2x, okay? As we've seen, it's here. But there's another one. We can turn from zero all the way around until we get to the next blue line. 
that too is a possible 2x. And you might be wondering why on earth I've gone beyond 180 degrees. Well, this is for x, but 2x, if I doubled all these values, double zero, I get zero, this would be 2x, and this would be 360 degrees. I can have 2x going between 0 and 360 degrees. Because I'm going to divide by 2 in a moment, it will pull the answer back within 180 degrees. So to get what the green 2x is, I know that this little blue bit in here is 78.463 odd degrees. So I just need to do 360 minus 78.463. And if you do that, what you end up with for the green 2x is 281.536 and so on degrees. So that when I now divide by 2, divide this one by 2 and you get 39.231 and so on degrees. And if you divide this one by 2, you get 140.768 and so on degrees. And we're asked to give our answers to one decimal place where appropriate. Well, certainly appropriate here for these two answers. So we can say that therefore x equals 39.2 degrees to one decimal place. Okay, one dp. Or for this one here, it's going to be 100 and 40.8 degrees to one decimal place, one dp. Okay, so that's how I would solve 1 minus 5 cos 2x equals 0. Now we've got this other one, sine 2x equals 0. So uh, let's just border that off and we'll do when sine 2x equals 0. Now when sine 2x equals 0, we could do this by graphical method or the quadrant method. Now, when I get sine cos equaling 1 or 0, I always tend to think of the graph because it's a lot easier to work with. I will show you the graphical method and the quadrant method for solving this though. All right. So if you are thinking about the graph of sine of an angle, okay, let's just mark this in, okay. Suppose we had this axis here, say as theta, and this is y, and we were looking at the graph of y equals sine theta. It's going to go from naught up to 1 at 90 degrees, back to 0 at 180 degrees, down to minus 1 at 270, and at 360 degrees is back to 0 again. So this is the graph then of y equals sine of theta. So where is the sine of an angle going to be 0? Well, at 0 degrees then, at 180 degrees, and at 360 degrees. So we can see then that therefore 2x the sine of an angle equaling 0, that angle, 2x, has to be 0 degrees, 180 degrees. And again, I have to go further on. I can go up to 360 degrees because I'm going to divide each of these answers by 2. And that will mean that x equals 0 degrees, 90 degrees, and 180 degrees. And that pulls us back into the range here. And that to me is the quickest way of doing that one. Might not even need to resort to a graph because you should have that graph in your mind and know these angles anyway. I did say though that we could do it by the quadrant rule and I'll show you how to do it by the quadrant rule. So if we were looking at solving sine 2x equals 0 then by the quadrant rule, let's just inverse sine both sides. So we've got the inverse sine of 0. And so therefore, 2x would equal, and if we inverse sine 0, 
you get zero, zero degrees. And it's at this point, okay, that we would draw our quadrant. So we'd have our quadrant diagram here with zero degrees here. We're looking at zero. Let's say zero is a positive number. To be honest, it wouldn't matter whether we took it as a negative number, whatever, okay? Let's imagine it's a positive number. Sign is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. Draw these lines equally inclined then to your horizontal here and mark those two angles in. What turns out though is that this angle here, 2x, is equal to 0 degrees. I know it doesn't look like it, but uh, let's just mark that in that that is 0 degrees. So what we've really got is that this line and this line lie on the horizontal. So this is a possible 2x, okay, and so 2 is the one round to this blue line here. That 2 is a possible 2x. So we see that 2x equals 0, okay, that's the red one. The green one would be 180 minus this little blue angle in here, which is 0, even though it doesn't look like it. 180 minus 0 is just 180, so you've got 180 degrees there. And we've got to be careful with this because we can still go round yet again, okay? All the way round to this line here, a total of 360 degrees plus what is really 0 degrees, giving 360 degrees. Divide each of these by 2 and you end up with x equals 0 degrees, 90 degrees, and 180 degrees. Obviously the same as what we've got here. But I think you might agree uh, that the gra graphical method is easier than the quadrant method, certainly for this one. But these are well-known angles when you've got the sine of an angle equals 0. So as I said earlier, you might not even need to resort to the graph. You should just know these values. OK, well, there you go. There's our answers. One down here, 39.2, 140.8, and then these exact ones, 0, 90, and 180 degrees.